I told you what is meant by measures of dispersion. I have given you explanation what are the objectives of finding out measures of dispersion, what is the importance of measures of dispersion and I told you that there are two types of measures of dispersion. These are absolute measures and relative measures. Under absolute measure, measures we have five types and one that is the first one is range. Right? So, out of five types of absolute measures of dispersion, first is range which we will start here today. What is range? Difference between the highest and lowest value in the series. These are two things, highest and lowest values in a series. Whenever the series are given to you, you have to find out what is the highest value, what is the lowest value and then on this basis you can say that this is the range. It is ranging from this value, the lowest one, to this value that is the highest one. So, as the term says range, that means how it is ranging from lowest to highest value and what is the range that you have to find out. So, range is equal to L minus S, L stands for largest item and S is smallest item. So, L minus S largest item minus smallest item is range. So, calculation of range is very very simple. Coefficient of range is L minus S upon L plus S. Now, for example, suppose highest marks in a class are 100 and lowest marks are 20. So, what will be the range? That is L minus S or 100 minus 20 that is L minus S 100 minus 20 that is 80. So, you can say that in a class marks highest are 100, lowest are 20. So, marks are ranging between 20 to 100 and the range is 80, right. So, this way range is calculated. Coefficient of range is L minus S upon L plus S. L is 100, S is 20, L plus S highest and lowest. 80 upon 120 and this is coefficient. Very, very simple to calculate. Now, let us see how we do we do the calculation in different type of series. Individual series, find out largest and smallest values of the series. Secondly, find out difference between L minus S. Suppose, marks are given in this form. These are the marks. R is L minus S. First write down the formula. What is R? Here, what is L? L is the largest. See the series. Find out the largest one. It may be in the center also. Here it is in the ascending order. This is the L and L minus S means smallest. What is the smallest here? This is 50. So, R is 50, 95 minus 50 and R is 45. So, range is 45. Marks are ranging between 50 to 95 and range is 45. Coefficient of range is L minus S upon L plus S. L is 95 minus 50, 95 plus 50, you get this value and this is coefficient of range. Simple calculation in the case of individual series. In the discrete series where frequencies are given, the steps are calculated as in case of individual series. First, you will do the calculation as you have done in the case of individual series. Second, frequencies of the series is not taken into account. In the discrete fre uh, series, frequencies are given, but when you are calculating range, you will not take into account the frequencies. You will just ignore frequencies, just see the item column x. For example, size and frequencies are given here. R is equal to L minus S. Now, you will ignore frequency. You will find out L in the size column. So, L here is 15. S is the smallest item is 10. So, range is 5. Clear? Coefficient of range L minus S upon L plus S, 
15 minus 10 upon 15 plus 10, 5 upon 25 and this is coefficient. We will just ignore frequency column, take only size column that is x. Now, in the continuous series, subtract lower limit of the lowest class interval from upper limit of the highest class interval and again frequencies are not taken into account. Now, x and f column is given here, subtract lower limit of the, limit of the lowest class interval which is the lowest class interval here, this is 0 and from upper limit of the highest class interval. What is the highest class interval? Upper limit of the highest class interval, highest class interval is 50 to 60 and upper limit of this highest class interval is 60. So, again if you frequencies you are not taking into account r is equal to l minus s, l is the largest that is upper limit of the largest class interval, s is the lower limit of the, uh, of the smallest class interval. So, l is 60, s is 0, range is 60. Coefficient of range is l minus s upon l plus s, 60 minus 0 upon 60 plus 0, 60 upon 60 is equal to 1 this is coefficient of range right. Now, another example if the class interval is not starting from 0 it is 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20 and so on frequencies which you are not going to take into account r is equal to l minus s. Now, here the largest class interval is here this is the highest class interval and upper limit of this highest class in interval is 30. So, l is 30 lowest class interval is this one, lower limit of the lowest class interval is 5. So, 30 minus 5 and range is 25, clear? Coefficient of range L minus S upon L plus S, 30 minus 5 upon 30 plus 5, 25 upon 35 and this is coefficient of range. So, this way you can say that range is calculated ignoring frequencies and it is a very, very simple way of calculating if we compare the methods of calculations in other measures of dispersion which are little difficult and tedious also. This is the most simple method of calculating measure of dispersion. Now, let us see its merits and demerits. Merits first simple to calculate and easy to understand. This you can agree, it is very simple to calculate and it is very easy to understand. Second, gives broad picture of data. That means, it is not taking into consideration each and every item of the series, it is just giving you the broad picture of the data. That means, the data is ranging from the lowest limit to the upper limit, this is the broad picture no detail, not affected by frequencies. It is not affected by frequencies because we are not taking frequencies into consideration. So, whatever are the frequencies, it is not affected by them. Takes least time in calculation as it is very simple to calculate. So, it takes the minimum time in calculation as compared to other measures then can be calculated even if middle items are missing. Because we are taking into consideration only the largest and the smallest one. So, even if the middle items are missing or any of the middle item is missing, then it would not affect the calculation of range. So, it can be calculated easily. These are the merits. Now, the demerits, it is not based on all items of distribution. There is a demerit in the sense that we are not taking into consideration each and every item. We are just taking the highest and the lowest limit. So, the answer just gives you the broad picture though it is very easy, but it is not based on all, all items of distribution. So, detailed study cannot be made with the help of range. Second, cannot be calculated in open end classes open end classes have both the sides open. The upper limit and lower limit are missing. 
that are open and we are concerned with lower and upper limit only or the largest and smallest value if that is missing you cannot calculate range. So, this way this method is not suitable for open end classes does not take into account the frequencies Re yes when we said that it is a merit not affected by frequencies that is a merit because you need not to go in detail that what are the frequencies and what are the values. But as the frequencies are no, not taken into account, so detailed study cannot be made. Fourth, highly affected by two extreme values. As we are taking the highest and the lowest values only, so you can say it is highly affected by extreme values, which is not a very accurate measure of dispersion, but it will just give you a broad picture of range of data. So, this way it has merits as well as demerits, but for a broad picture of data or for a just simple view of the extent of series range is considered an appropriate measure of dispersion. So, this way this is first measure of dispersion and next we will move to second measure of dispersion that is quartile deviation.